Hey guys, this is Pixel Dan coming to you from the 2015 New York Toy Fair, and I am here at the Four Horsemen Toy Design booth with Eric Treadaway. How's it going, Eric? It's going great. We're having a great time here. Yeah, and this is the first time you've had an actual booth at Toy Fair, right? After many, many years, yeah, we, uh, we took the plunge. How's it been going for you over here? It's been going well. Uh, you know, we kind of came in with no expectations, and, uh, you know, we've been meeting some good people, and... Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's it's going well. Awesome. So we're kind of hot on the heels of your successful Ravens Kickstarter. You just got all the product out. They've been very well received. Um, and one of the things you guys just recently did is you started asking fans what other birds that they would like to see done in this line that could potentially happen. And I do notice that you have a few on display here that we had not seen before. So I wanted to ask you about those. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we, we got so many responses. I mean, birds we never even heard of before. Um, and the, the biggest problem you've got with these birds now is narrowing it down to, you know, this time we did 12, so narrowing it down to 12 species. You could, you could do wave after wave and still have cool birds to do. Um, but, yeah, so we chose the ones that we thought would have the most impact uh, just like you know looking different from the previous birds or you know have a really great color scheme or something like that um, and also which ones were the like the really top contenders right. that people were really asking for um, and so we sculpted six new heads and then six of them are, are straight repaints and so we've done a blue jay which I think was far in a way the the top request I love it that's one of the ones I wanted to see the most he looks great I you know originally everybody thought we were gonna do uh, repaint the Cardinal and just do it in a blue jay scheme and we kind of thought the same thing so we did it we figured it wasn't we just looked at it, it wasn't good enough so oh. we, we went back to the, the old uh, sculpting board and uh, we sculpted that one up from scratch awesome. so we got the blue jay um, we did a toucan uh, the pelican uh, the macaw, Archaeopteryx, and uh, this guy back here, Etheron, which is uh, kind of a medieval crowned uh, eagle warrior. And those are the new heads. And then as far as the repaints, uh, we've redid the rooster in white. Uh, we redid the falcon as an osprey. We redid the owl as a white owl. Uh, Egalis, we're going to do some sort of a like a vintage color scheme on. We we have a one up there, but I think we're going to tweak it still. It's going to be like a spirit of '76 type uh, oh, cool. Egalis. And then uh, back here, we've got a uh, blue phoenix now, and uh, we had Minotaur the duck in the first line. Now we've got his brother Malatar the duck. Malatar, he's a mallard. I love it with the green head. Yeah, and you know that was one. It, that was a Kickstarter exclusive. Uh, the Minotaur the Duck was, right. and it, it's, it's so popular, and people, are, so many people have come up so disappointed that they couldn't get it, and we wanted to do, uh, find a way to do kind of a reissue of it without, uh, you know, disrespecting the people who bought the Kickstarter exclusive, right. so, you know, it's, it's rebranded, it's got a new name, it's got a new paint scheme, uh, you know, so... The, the original is still intact as, uh, you know, a limited edition piece. And then, you know, this is something that's going to be a little bit more of an open stock item. So, you know, people can always come in and get a duck figure from us. That is awesome. So what's the uh, rollout plan with these? Are you guys just going to put these up for sale on uh, Store Horseman at some point? Or are you still trying to figure that out? That's part of what this weekend's been about. Um, it, it's they're definitely, uh, you know, probably in a couple months we'll go up for pre-order on Store Horseman one way or the other. We've had a little bit of discussion about whether or not to drop one or two into the Mythic Legions Kickstarter. Oh, okay. Um, trying to, you know, that got out a little bit yesterday. We're looking at what fan response has been. Um, you know, we don't want to try to stretch people's budgets too far. Uh, in, you know, so we're taking a look. It might be somewhere we might drop one or two in, but that's still up for debate right now. I mean, the, the Kickstarter process is a very liquid process, so, you know, we're kind of moving, you know, with the Kickstarter itself. Awesome. Very cool. So yeah, you just brought up the Mythic Legions Kickstarter. This is the platform that you've got right now to launch your brand new line, which is on display right behind us here. Yes. Uh, yeah. I mean, this is our, our big push here at Toy Fair. It's kind of been our big push, you know, within the studio for two years. I mean, it's taken a while to get it developed. Um, yeah. Mythic Legions is, it's a six inch scale 
fantasy line, very uh, much a classic take on fantasy. We're trying to hit all the, the archetypes, uh, you know, that people are very familiar with. And, you know, there's kind of have a nostalgia for, even though these aren't old characters, they've got the feel and of, you know, sort of classic dwarves and skeleton type fighters and knights and orcs and all that kind of good stuff. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, we've got a ton of characters. Uh, we have, I think, 22 up on the Kickstarter. We've got an all-in package. Um, and the figures themselves, they've got each come with three weapons. There's an, a lot of interchangeable armor, and uh, the decorations on their heads are interchangeable, like if they've got the helmets with the, the ports for different horns and wings and things like that. Uh, they each have about 30 points of articulation, and, uh, you know, we, we love them. We're, we're, we're thrilled with it. Yeah, um, they are so cool looking, and I just I do love the style. I love all the different types of characters we have here. Um, and you did reveal these last year around Toy Fair time at the uh, Toy Apocalypse event, and I do remember at that time you guys did kind of reveal it uh, along the lines of it being more of a four-inch scaled line, and I remember specifically you explained to me that your reason for doing that was because this is the Mythic Legions line. The idea was to build legions of warriors, and you thought four-inch scale would be the better suit for that. Um, but you have switched it to six inch now, as you just said, because um, I remember there was a little bit of disappointment at the time that they weren't six inch. Yep. So I wanted to ask you, are, are you at all disappointed that it's not four inch and that it's gone up? And has there been the same kind of a reaction to you switching it to six inch? Has there been disappointed people? If it would have been this time last year and we were talking about doing it four inch in the next day, we for some reason had to decide it would have been six inch i would have been disappointed at that point but now we've had a full year to to gauge reaction and think about this probably overthink it and and also in this past year we've also had the the success the further success of the ravens and um you know we've seen how they came out in production and you know how great a job of the factory was doing and we've also gotten the pricing on this stuff. There's been so many factors going in. Now it makes perfect sense to me. In a way, it almost surprises me that we ever thought otherwise, because it just makes such perfect sense. Um, but no, I'm not disappointed. I think it makes a lot of sense. And as far as the Legion building aspect, that was one of the things that we made sure of with the way that we designed these figures is we were kind of like, well, we're going to do six inches. so. We want to do giant beasts. We want to do legion builders. Okay, let's let's just do it. There's no reason we can't do it just because it's six inch, as long as we can keep it affordable. And that was that was what we really worked hard on with this line is to make sure that those army builders were affordable. And um, you know, the base price on one of the regular figures on the Kickstarter is thirty. Uh, you know, pre shipping. The base price on the legion builders is around fifteen. So it's literally half the price of the, the mainline figures. That's awesome. 15, you know, you're getting almost into four inch prices, especially for a small right. company like us. Right. Um, and then even if you buy into the, the six packs, you're getting closer to, to, you know, $14 a figure. So we really tried to make them as, as affordable as possible. So I think actually the bigger problem that some people have mentioned, and I, 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 this is a very valid point, it's, it's going to become more about the space in your you know yeah. your display than anything yeah. else i can see that for sure so you you kind of mentioned beasts there briefly so are you is that something you guys are looking at for this if this goes through and is successful you might give us some large beasts to go with these guys absolutely oh. that uh that is one of the big the the diversity is the big appeal of this line for us not only amongst the you know the six inch scale characters but then getting in to doing things like horses and different mounts and giants and beasts, play sets, uh, you know, accessories, all of that. And for us, in moving up to six inch, uh, it, you know, it gets a little bit more challenging, but it's also a matter of finding creative ways to get larger and keep it, uh, you know, reasonable for, right. for people's budgets. Um, you know, so if we were to do, you know, keep using this example and because it's one I really want to do. Um, you know, a, a 12 inch troll figure, yeah. uh, you know, you're talking a figure about that big, that wide, wow. that deep, you know, you're talking a cube of a figure. If you were to do it in, you know, traditional ABS and PVC, it would probably cost a fortune. 
but if we do it in uh, you know vinyl, we can make it look like it's a perfect yeah. fit for the line, paint it up nicely. Uh, you know, accessorize it the right way, put in possibly like, uh, you know, soft goods or real chains or things like that and like really make it a deluxe figure. But because you're working on that vinyl base, you know, you don't have to sell this figure for $250 or something like that. We could keep it, you know, hopefully, you know, under $100 or $80 or something like that where you know, a collector could say, you know, this is this is kind of a splurge item, and I, I you know, I can, it, I feel like I'm getting something for the the price. Right. Very cool. That is, that's exciting. I'm excited to see what you guys are going to do with it, and everything you have on display here looks really cool. So, you know, fingers crossed for the Kickstarter. I think it's going very well already. Is it not? Uh, I think we're uh, at nine o'clock tonight. We're at a week. Um, what are we at, CB, for percentage? 61%. Awesome. So, uh, you know, it, it is going well so far. We've, uh, it, you know, it started off really strong. It, you know, Kickstarters tend to level out a little bit. It's at that point now. But the fact that we're at 61% is, is fantastic right awesome. now. Very cool. Well, there you go. The Kickstarter is up right now. So if this looks like something you guys are interested in, you definitely should head over there and support this because it's, it's awesome looking. The idea is fantastic. And I want to see beasts. I want to see your troll come into this line. Uh, one more thing I did want to bring up before we got away here is the Power Lords line. I wanted to kind of ask you what was happening with that as well. Uh, you know, with Power Lords, we we put out the first wave. I really had good success with it. Um, but we, we were able to step back and take a look. And after, you know, at the point where we were about a year into the license, we kind of really stepped back and took a look at, at how it worked financially, what the fans liked, what they you know, didn't like as much, um, what they expected out of the line. And uh, it seems like the, the biggest request was we want more of those main characters. People seem to respond better to the fully painted characters. They seem to respond better to the, you know, the carded figures, uh, more so than like the little drops of the lesser painted figures. Uh, and so, you know, of course, in that meantime, too, we also, we've prototyped up the Power Soldier Assassin, right. uh, Sidot, the Skyzor, and Ragoth. So now we've got this big pile of prototypes. And, as, you know, as the collectors ourselves, we know what, how we would want to get these figures. So later in the year, we're lo looking to launch a Kickstarter for Power Lords so that we can come in in one fell swoop it probably do one more prototype, so we're getting you know maybe maybe five, six characters in one shot, and if we can get that Kickstarter to fund, you know you've got half the line all of a sudden, and then maybe like a year, two year and a half later, we do another Kickstarter, and we can guarantee that we get all the main characters out without a lot of filler, okay. and we can go you know the full high end with the full paint, the full packaging, right. you know all the accessories every time, so. You know, we're excited about it because, I, I mean, Power Lords is a license that doesn't necessarily, uh, you know, make sense on paper 100% yeah. because it is obscure. But, you know, we're passionate about it. We love it. We know it's awesome. Uh, we just need to get it out there to people. And right. so Kickstarter is a great way to do that. And so, yeah, I mean, we're, we're excited about it. It's just we need it like I said, to step back a little bit and kind of reboot the process and, and make sure that folks were getting exactly what they wanted out of it. Cool. Is the plan to stick with the, the four inch scale with that as well? Or were you guys looking at maybe adjusting that one also? You know, we've had requests to bump it up to six inch. Of course, you know, the temptation is there when you hear people saying that, but the plan is to keep it at four inch. Okay. Uh, you know, it, to me, it's always, it, it feels very appropriate, appropriate for a sci-fi line. Um, you know, I, you know, growing up with Star Wars and uh, yeah. Battlestar Galactica and uh, Buck Rogers. It, you know, it, it just seemed like a very perfect scale for sci-fi. Right. Um, but also, I mean, more importantly, we've you know we've invested a lot, and in, and in more so than that, you know, our fans have been so supportive of the line, and they've invested a lot into this. 
So, I, you know, there's absolutely no way, you know, we would just go in and change the scale of the line right in the middle of it. Right. Um, it's We've started something. Our goal right now is, is to finish it and finish it the right way. Awesome. Well, very, very cool. A lot of great information here. So uh, a lot of cool things coming from Four Horsemen. Definitely get in there and check out this Mythic Legions Kickstarter. Um, and looking forward to seeing what you guys are doing with uh, the birds and Power Lords and all that cool stuff. So, Eric, thank you so much for the awesome conversation conversation we just had. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you, everybody out there. <laughs> well, there you go, guys. There's the latest from Four Horsemen Toy Design here at the 2015 New York Toy Fair. Be sure to stay tuned right here for all of the latest from the event. Stay up to date with Pixel Dan at Toy Fair 2015. Follow at Pixel Dan on Twitter or forward slash Mandalorian 30 on YouTube.com. Thanks for tuning in to your premier source for all things toys, Pixel Dan. See you again! Stay up to date with Toy Yak and Pixel Dan at Toy Fair 2015. Follow at Toy Yak Pack on Twitter or Toy Yak on YouTube.com. Thanks for tuning in and see you again!